it can feel so hard to set personal finance goals or set any goal when you know it's going to be hard to achieve it. Now I know what I'm capable of, I know I can do it, and so I want to share this journey with you guys. I'm not proud of that, that's not good advice, but I'm not always here to give you good advice, I'm here to show you a real person's life. I can't believe I'm about to say this, but I'm gonna let you guys in on something that is very close to my heart. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, and welcome to another life makeover vlog and this is also going to be a continuation of my monthly reset for september so happy september happy life makeover vibes i am so happy that you guys are here before we get further into the video i want to extend a special invitation to all my vancouver friends i am going to be hosting my first ever meetup in vancouver on saturday september 28th it's going to be in collaboration with the line in their beautiful offices you guys can stop by, have a snack, have a chat. There's going to be a giveaway for the first three people to arrive and we will all be able to take a sneak peek at the new Gentle Productivity colors. I really can't wait to see you there. If you want to make sure not to miss any info about this meetup, please send an email to zoe at zoeprichard.com and I will send you everything you need to know. I can't wait to squeeze you guys. It's been a while since I've continued my life makeover series. The last one I think was before my birthday and that's kind of what inspired this series in case you guys are new, in case you haven't seen the little mini series that I'm doing called Life Makeover. Basically the goal is to continue becoming my best self and it started out becoming my best self before my 28th birthday but Obviously you don't just like have a birthday, wake up and like suddenly you're perfect and suddenly you're, you're, you're your best self. <laughs> I feel like it's the kind of thing that we are always working on and always evolving and just always working on feeling our best. And over here on my channel, we are always working on living our healthy and wealthy best lives. So yes, if you are new, my name is Zoe. I'm so happy that you're here, whether or not you're new. Um, but if you haven't yet, please subscribe and please do give this video a thumbs up. If you are enjoying it, please like the video because it really supports my channel. I'm really excited. I'm talking very animatedly. I'll try and like keep it together. <laughs> But I'm just really excited for the next couple of days. Now that things are feeling a little bit more brisk, I know it's not fall yet, okay, we still have like 20 more days until it's actually fall, but for me, September and like September 1st, it is back to productivity season. I feel like in the summer I can be quite slow and not very motivated when it comes to work and goal setting and there's something about September, it's like boom, time to take action. I'm ready to set goals again and I'm ready to work a little bit harder. So with that kind of spirit, that's what I wanna take you guys along for for the next two work days. And my theme for the life makeover is back to productivity and back to goal setting because I feel like I've been talking about this all summer but I haven't really been focusing on any concrete goals and that wasn't coming from a place of like me being depressed or me being lazy or me you know being sad it was really coming from a place of happiness and contentment and just enjoying the summertime but like I said there's something about that September 1st you know we flip the calendar and I'm like okay I'm awake I'm ready to go I hope you guys will enjoy this video and enjoy hanging out over the next couple of days the last thing I want to say is that in no way is life makeover about becoming a brand new person and disliking who we are. It's just about that constant evolution and always working to be our best selves, our healthy and wealthy best selves, okay? Okay. So speaking of being our best selves and speaking of kind of just like leveling up, something that I spoke about in my monthly reset and something that I really wanna work on this fall and this winter is elevating the way I dress. I've always loved fashion, I've always loved style, I've always loved a cute outfit. When it comes to like spending money and stuff, this is where a lot of my money goes because this is something that I just find dressing up and buying clothes, it makes me feel good, it makes me feel confident and it's just where I like to spend my money. I don't color my hair, I don't get my eyelashes done, I don't get facials, clothing is my thing. However, when the temperatures start to drop, and especially with me being a freelancer, working from home, working in kind of isolation a lot, like I don't have a lot of calls, I don't have a lot of meetings, <laughs> I'm like alone in my apartment a lot, I tend to fall into like ruts with how I dress and I will just wear a lot of like sweatpants and sweatsuits and I'll wear the same outfit over and over again. And I love being comfy, don't get me wrong, I love a sweatsuit, I love a sweatshirt, like I love all of those things, but I do, 
when I put on a cute outfit like I have on right now, I do feel a little bit more confident. I do feel like I wanna be that much more productive and it just feels really good. So I'm not gonna be, you know, the best dressed award every single day. I will definitely keep wearing my sweatsuits, but a goal that I have for the fall is to, even if I'm not leaving the house, even if I'm not talking to anyone or having a call that day, it's to put on a cute outfit more often than I put on a sweatsuit. So to help me with that elevation, you guys, and also this outfit that I'm wearing, like can we admit this outfit is so cute. I wanted to share a little lookbook with you guys from Fabrik who has so kindly sponsored this video. So Fabrik is a collective designer brand made up of over 300 amazing, super talented, and with amazing experience. Like some of the brands you guys that they've worked for, designers from around the world. The designers will design individual pieces like this top and this jeans that I am wearing or little micro capsules. And it is such a cool way to shop world renowned designers at a more affordable rate than high fashion. You're also pretty much guaranteed to find something that no one else at your school or your office, your workplace has. You guys, I had to write it down because the list is so long. Fabrique works with designers who have worked for brands such as Bottega Veneta, Escada, Michael Kors, Loewe, Louis Vuitton, Hermes, and Saint Laurent. Are you kidding me? One of the pieces I'm gonna show you was designed by someone who has dressed Rihanna. So that is so cool. Thank you Fabrique for sponsoring this video and let's get into the lookbook. Let's start with this top. It is so gorgeous. This is like a pearly polo knit sweater. It is called the Cassiopeia sweater and it, I was just instantly drawn to it because of these beautiful pearls. I just think it is so cute, so perfect for like a corporate girly vibe. And like I spoke about just now, with me even working from home, wanting to dress up a little bit more. This is so perfect for looking put together on calls and just feeling nice and put together and nice and professional while I'm working from home. So this top was designed by Daphne Wright, who is Valentino's lead knitwear designer. That is so cool. It's so beautiful, I love it. So we need to talk about these jeans. At first look, you're like, okay, Zoe, they're just a classic pair of wide leg dark wash denim but you guys look closely these jeans play a little trick on you because they are a double waist so they're quite high waisted they do come above the belly button to sit right in kind of that like squishy i don't know what you call this like the squishy part of your hips where your or your waist thank you so the belt loops are down here but then the zipper and the button go all the way up to here so there's a double waist which i feel like is just kind of like a little wink so you guys can get a better look here they're this really really nice wide leg really really comfy soft high quality denim they feel super flattering so comfortable these double waisted jeans were designed by talia shuvanov who has dressed rihanna you guys dressed rihanna and has worked at Alexander Wang and Dion Lee. This top is my favorite. This is the Chivon Rouge top in this beautiful like light butter yellow. You guys can see it is so beautiful. This fold over detail here in the front and everything is made of this beautiful lace that is super, super soft and stretchy. And you guys can see the top is pretty long but you could definitely bring it up and just kind of play with it. You can also play with the sides if you want to bring it up shorter. You can run it up like that and put a little tie on the sides. This top is absolutely gorgeous and was designed by James Holman, who is ex Kenzo Versace and opening ceremony. And once again, it's just so beautiful. These are called the Marley Colored Pocket Jeans. You guys can see the wash of the pockets is a little bit darker, which makes them look so unique. And look at this, you guys. There's like this raised part right here. So these are super, super unique jeans. They've got a seam going down the middle and they're a really nice wide leg. These are so comfortable. So I totally love this outfit and these jeans, which were designed by Rebecca Bach, who won 2023 Denim Designer of the Year. So, so cool. These next jeans are called the Merrill Patchwork Jeans and they are so cool. I feel like I'm just saying that about every single piece, you guys, but these have a bit of like a retro flair. They remind me of something a bit 70s or 80s. 
We've got the logo on the back once again, and these ones have no pockets, which personally I find to make your butt look really good. And these jeans, you guys, were designed by Marco Pelosi, who has worked at Dolce & Gabbana, MSGM, and Marc Jacobs. Super beautiful jeans. I am obsessed with this top. I put it on and I was just like, oh my gosh, I'm in love. It's the perfect fit. This is called the Haley vest and it's like a tweed herringbone, kind of Chanel inspired with the little pockets. And these pockets work, you guys. You could put, you could put snacks in here. <laughs> when I put this on, I just felt so fashionable and so, to me, this is like it, girl. I feel like this vest, this look is super, super elegant and timeless. I love it so much. And this vest was designed by Alex Rotin, who has worked at Kenzo Lagerfeld, as well as Nina Ricci, and is currently a Chanel Haute Couture star, which yeah, I feel like this is giving Chanel. So for the rest of the day, I will be wearing the Cassiopeia sweater with the double-waisted jeans. I have a call for copywriting. They're pretty corporate and pretty buttoned up, so I do like to kind of look a little bit together and it's just going to be such a fun outfit to wear for the rest of the day. You guys can check out Fabric and all of these pieces linked down below. They are so perfect for that back to productivity, maybe heading back into the office season. Thank you so much Fabric for sponsoring today's video. Today is Thursday and it's currently 1.12 p.m. I started this vlog a little bit late. I usually like to start like in the morning. I just had some work that like I needed to finish so I was like you can't start your vlog until you oh my god this stanley cup is like so hard to get open oh my god every time i'm like am i gonna need a man Ugh, and then i get it so yeah i have a bit of time until my call my call is at 2 30 which is honestly the worst time because I have to go run an errand later. I thought my call was at 1.30, which was the perfect time because I finish at two. Then I go out and run my errand before traffic picks up. But my call is at 2.30, ends at three, which traffic is gonna start, but that's okay. We're gonna go out anyway. Before we talk about goals and stuff, I just wanna clean up my desk before I like show it to you. Everything is such a mess. Okay, I think that's as good as it's gonna get. I have a huge win to share with you guys. I think you're gonna be proud. Maggie stayed alone for an hour and a half when my mom was visiting. I shared this over on Instagram, but in case you don't follow me on Instagram, I wanna share it with you guys here as well. So Maggie stayed alone for an hour and a half when my mom was here, we went out for lunch and I was just like, you know what? I don't wanna pay, like I don't wanna pay a dog sitter. I don't wanna worry about the hassle. She's been staying alone like 45 minutes to an hour. So I was like, I think she can do it. I think she can do it. So we did it. I obviously didn't enjoy myself the most at lunch because I was watching the camera quite a bit, but that's okay. It's like baby steps and she did so well. I was so proud of her. Like it was so amazing. And my mom sent this card in the mail. It was so cute. It's like this crazy dog. She put like stickers all over him. And then it says, give me five, congratulations. She literally addressed it to Maggie. On the envelope that she sent it in, it didn't say my name, it said Maggie Pritchard. Um, and then congratulations, home alone in glitter. So this is so cute and it was just such a milestone. After that, we ended up doing two hours because last weekend, JS and I like impromptu got invited to a birthday barbecue. And we're like, F it, let's leave the dog. Let's see what she can do. Same thing. We're watching her on the camera and we're like, okay, if things like if she really starts, if we can see she starts getting anxious because you can see the signs, she'll start panting. She'll start barking a lot. And it's a different bark than her territorial someone's at the door bark. And we managed to do a little over two hours. So amazing, amazing progress. I almost feel afraid to try again because I'm afraid that it was like a fluke, but I know I need to. Maggie, come here. Come here so everyone can see how cute you are and what a good girl you are. Come. Oh, okay, I'll bring them to you. I'll bring them to you. No, no, don't, don't move. Honestly, it was even rude of me to try and disturb her. Such a good girl. Yes, you did so amazing. So amazing. Everyone's proud of you. Everyone's cheering for you. Your YouTube friends, they're all cheering for you and saying, good girl. Oh, yes, looking so cute. 
<laughs> she looks so angry when she gives me her blue eye like that. <laughs> so I'm just gonna get a tiny bit of work done and then you and I will chat about goals because that is what this video is about. We, like throw it and she'll like catch it in her mouth and I was like okay are you gonna catch it are you gonna catch it and she's looking at me she to me she was saying yes I'm gonna catch it I throw it to her hits her in the face and she's like <laughs> she just grabbed it and brought it on the couch classic chlorophyll matcha Hi guys, so we just came for a little drive. It's almost 3.30, so I probably still shouldn't be drinking this matcha, but I made it before the call so that right after my call, I could just run and leave the house. 3 p.m. is kind of like my classic slump time of day. I felt like today was just flying by, and then I knew that if I, like I just wanted to leave the house to kind of keep the day feeling good because yeah you can just get into that slump of like oh my gosh i've been in my house pretty much all day so yeah maggie and i came for a little drive there's a park right here i'm gonna let her out after and just like do her business and maybe have a little run the reason i had to leave the house is so cute and exciting i just wanted to share this with you guys because this is gonna be not it's not old navy <laughs> this is gonna be a big part of my fall and just i spoke about this i think in my like fall wish list and trends video is like reading and i love summer reads but fall reads are just next level like reading in the fall is so good so i've recently been wanting to oh <laughs> i've recently been wanting to reread one of my favorite series from when i was like a kid when i was young most years i'll reread at least one or two of the harry potter books and i don't want to do that this year i wanted to reread this series so okay they're not in order which one which one should i show you guys <laughs> let's do this one I'm going to be rereading a series of unfortunate events. This was my favorite series as a kid. I would say, I say that I learned to read on this series because my um, caregiver started reading it to me. He was like a family friend. He started reading this to me. He would like pick me up from school. When I was really young, my dad traveled a lot. And so my mom had help from this friend and he, like taught me how to read and he would read to me and he would read me these books. I don't know how we fell into them, but yeah, they were obviously super popular. Probably a lot of you guys have read them. And then there was that movie with, um, I was gonna say with Count Olaf. Yeah, with Count Olaf, with Jim Carrey. And then down the line, they made the show, the series on Netflix. I haven't watched that one because Jim Carrey is my Count Olaf. <laughs> Let me know who's your count Olaf. I had the full series and I never finished the last two books. I made it all the way the cicadas. I read the entire series one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, maybe. And then I never I know I never finished no, I didn't finish twelve, twelve and thirteen. There was thirteen books. So I had all of the books and when my mom moved out of my childhood house, she got rid of them, which like fair enough. But anyways, I've decided I wanted to reread them. The brand new box set is $225. So I went looking on Facebook and I was able to find books one to 10. Someone was selling them here in Montreal West, which is where I just came to pick them up. So now I have books one to 10 and I had an Indigo gift card that I used to order the last three books because I want the whole series, no excuses. I am finishing it this fall and winter. I know they're books for kids, but I feel like I will just get a whole new appreciation for them as an, ad as an adult. 
I love writing for like kids and like young teens, like early readers, I think it's called because I feel like the writer has to try harder to impress the reader. They also help teach kids like bigger words and improve their vocabulary. So I actually find kids books can sometimes be better written than like YA books, for example. So, so excited. That is like gonna be a fun fall project. I can't believe I'm about to say this, but I'm gonna let you guys in on something that is very close to my heart. And it might seem a little bit cheesy, but you guys know I'm a freelance copywriter and that is very corporate and buttoned up like I talked about. Something that I've always loved is creative writing and it's never really been an outlet that I've given myself a chance, given myself the time to explore. So that's another thing, a goal of mine for this fall and winter is to have some fun and do some creative writing and I have no idea what will come of it, but I have an idea for like a story and I wanna work on it and I feel like reading stuff that is geared for kids because the idea for the story I have is geared for kids, okay? Um, and I feel like reading something geared for kids is gonna help me. So that's what's up. That is like a secret, secret project, but like secret thing close to my heart that I wanna work on and that I'm passionate about. Oh my God, I just like spat matcha on myself. That's classic. Where's a nice shirt? Like one of the nicest shirts I now own. Spits matcha on herself. So I'm feeling so cute in my outfit. I brought my Louis Vuitton with me because in the comments, I think it was of my fall trends video. You guys, this is so funny. And I just wanted to like chat about this quickly. Um, one thing you guys need to know about me is I, I'm gonna close this. No, it's gonna be too hot. I cannot handle like conflict, confrontation, disagreements. Like I, I just can't. Like any, I, I, it drives me insane when someone doesn't agree with me. And I know that that's a me problem, and it's like something that I need to work on. Um, I also like get so I get kind of upset if someone like misconstrues something that I say. If they like take it the wrong way, if they don't understand, I like feel bad, and I always just feel this urge for people to like understand my point of view and know that like. I wasn't trying to be offensive with what I said or like, you know, this is why I think that way or like whatever. Like it's it's just a really weird trait of mine. I also have this trait of like reading when I'm reading comments, um, not just like on my channel, but like on other people's videos or like in a Facebook group, like some stuff in like my neighborhood, like the one that I live in. We have like a community Facebook group and people can be really like mean just like to one another to their neighbors and sometimes you, you just can't tell the tone and I always assume if the tone isn't like explicitly nice I assume the tone I assume that the tone is rude so that's just like something that I like struggle with I guess and that I need to work on but tying this back to the Louis Vuitton it was so funny because there was a little bit of a debate in the comments um, of that video because I spoke about how Longchamp bags are like back in trend and how I just didn't really see myself buying one because you know like it's a piece of nylon and whatever. What I want you guys to know is that I am not a expert or a bible or a source of like I say this or I think this therefore you must agree with me you know I think I I don't know I think sometimes maybe people think that like because I post videos about budgeting and that I care about my finances that like you know, everything I do has to be like logic and backed up and like perfect or I don't know. So then people were coming for my Louis Vuitton bag and they're like, Zoe, your Louis Vuitton bag is canvas. Like that's not a good purchase either. And like, that's fine if you think that way. And it's fine if I think that a Longchamp is not a good purchase. And it's not that I don't think a Longchamp is a good purchase. I don't think it's a good purchase for me. Like I, when I filmed that video, I was like, I just don't really want a long shot. It wasn't for me shading it. It wasn't for me to say anyone who buys one is bad. Like none of that. I make stupid decisions with my money. I spend my money in stupid ways. This bag is teeny tiny. It doesn't even fit my freaking phone. Okay. It doesn't fit my phone. This is a stupid purchase, but I love it. And I'm happy that I made that purchase. For me, it was like a smart, stupid purchase because I bought it used. I've been wanting it for a while. I saved up for it and that's that. Never ever ever is what I say like good or bad or I think this way therefore you should think this way and I don't know if anyone actually thinks that I just wanted to like because 
we were we were chatting in the comments and I was like, you know what? I want to like talk about this more because I do think it's interesting. The funny thing, the funny outcome of that whole conversation is that now I want a long shot bag because you guys were really selling me on it. You were like, it's nylon, but the quality is good and they will repair it and it lasts forever. And then I was looking on Pinterest to get video to get photos for that video. And the long shot bags are so cute. And so now I want one. <laughs> I'm not a fire YouTuber. I'm not a frugal YouTuber. I'm not a constantly low spend YouTuber. I'm not a anti fast fashion YouTuber. I'm not an anti luxury goods YouTuber. I'm not a anti consumerism YouTuber. I'm not an anti consumption. I am not a thrifting. I am a little bit of a touch of many things. I, me as an individual, I like thrifting. I like expensive clothes. I like designer bags. I like tote bags. I like saving money. I I like spending money. I like all of these things. That is the point of my channel. It is not to tell you that there is only one specific way to live your life and to spend your money and to live your dream life and to make and save money. There are a billion different ways. As much as we are all different, there are different ways to do that. Is buying designer bags a smart financial decision? Probably not. But then again, if something makes you happy and you're not hurting yourself in the process, AKA going into heavy, high interest consumer debt, it's just all about balance. It's, it's really all about balance. So I might save up for a long shot because you guys really sold me on it. But yeah, it's just this funny kind of thing that happens sometimes if I say that I don't like something, like when I said that I didn't like my Patagonia, people were like so upset. And it's like, just because I don't like Patagonia doesn't mean I think you shouldn't like it or I think you're bad if you have one or anything like Patagonia is a great company I just had a bad experience with them that's it you know I don't know you never have to do what I do or buy what I buy or if I do a sponsorship I'm never like you need to buy this stuff it's like I'm just showing it to you because I like it and you don't have to like it and you you shouldn't like everything that an, a single individual says. Like we need to think and we need to say, you know what, I like that shirt or you know what, I think that shirt's fugly. So I'm gonna take Maggie out because she deserves it. I'm gonna put my Louis Vuitton on. <laughs> you ready? Let's go. What do you hear? No, don't go cuckoo. Don't go cuckoo. It's not the it's not the time. It's just a lady. Come on. talk about it enough is journaling about my personal finances. I always like to have just kind of an everything brain dump notebook that is more work focused separate from my personal journal. So this is that I used to use one. You guys probably saw it in a lot of my videos from the line. It was like black and it had my initials on it. Uh, and then I used that one all up and I got this cute puppy one. So this is what I use to take notes during my meetings. And I also use it as my personal finance journal. If you are someone who tends to get anxious about your money and your personal finance, I highly recommend actually taking pen to paper instead of just staring at your accounts online. You guys know I use a budget tracker and I love it, but instead of just staring at your budget tracker, sometimes it can feel so good to just go kind of old school and write down how you're feeling about money, but also write down some numbers and like do some calculations. So I will write down how much, you know, disposable money I have, how much is owing on my credit cards, how much is in my account. And I will do the addition or the subtraction and see the numbers on paper. Sometimes it's rough. And this month I know what's coming up is about to be rough. I know that this month I spent more than I've earned and that has been causing me a lot of anxiety. 
I have decided to dip into some of my sinking funds and dip into my emergency fund to cover that. This just goes right back to what I was just saying in the car is that I don't always make the best decisions and you know people have different ideas of what your emergency fund should be for when is an appropriate time to dip into it versus not in my opinion the appropriate time is when you need to and it doesn't actually matter what you spent it on because at the end of the day it's your money and no one else can tell you what to do with it i haven't done or filmed my monthly budgeting routine yet so i haven't gone through and like really broken everything down and looked at everything but I know that two of the areas where I really, really spent a lot of money this month were for Maggie. I believe I overspent by almost $150. And in my like healthcare category, I renewed my fitness bracelet for the whole year, which cost almost $400. I bought new running shoes. Like I spent over $500 on health and wellness stuff and that is so much money and again like in total between my cash spending and some of my on credit spending and my bills and stuff i spent more than i earned and yeah i'm not proud of that that's not good advice but i'm not always here to give you good advice i'm here to show you a real person's life and i'm here to be real with you guys so maggie just maggie just jumped off the bed i She's like waiting for JS to come home. So when something like that happens, if I know I need to take from my savings or even when I know I'm gonna be able to put money towards my savings, I like to actually write it down and I will say, okay, you know, here's how much I earned or here's how much I have left. Here's how much I'm gonna go to my savings. And I will like draw little arrows. Like I'm gonna give you guys an example. Let's say it'll be like, okay, 500 arrow TFSA and then like 200 vacation. I just find it so soothing and therapeutic to write it down and then I will transfer it over into my budget tracker. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I feel like before I can actually set any personal finance goals for the coming month or for the coming season, I need to figure out my overspending and probably one of my goals is going to be to repay those sinking funds and that emergency fund that I've, that I'm going to have to take money out of. So yeah, I just wanted to have that little chat with you guys because we're going to talk about goal setting. And the other thing I wanted to say is that it can feel so hard to set personal finance goals or set any goal when you know it's going to be hard to achieve it. It can feel so difficult. For example, I'm signed up to run a 10K in about a month. And had I known how hard running was going to be for me and sometimes painful and uncomfortable and difficult, I don't think I would have set that goal. Like I set that goal very blindly, which is kind of good because I didn't know how hard it would be. When you know something's gonna be hard, it can deter you from setting that goal. If you have a ton of debt and you're working with a lower income, you may not even wanna set the goal of paying off your debt because it feels so daunting. I want us to avoid that behavior and for myself too, like for me, it's tempting to be like, I'll just give up and I'll set new goals at New Year's because I haven't been hitting my personal finance goals pretty much all summer long. But I need to remind myself that it's not about the speed in which you achieve a goal and not all goals are meant to be easy either, you know? I'm the type of person who will write down and take out the trash on my to-do list just because it's satisfying to take it off and to tick it off, I mean, and not all goals are gonna be like that. Some of them are gonna be hard. Some of them you actually have to like grind towards and some of them you may not meet in your desired time frame. but it's better that you start and get there slower than that you're afraid and you never start at all. So that's kind of my mentality. And that is the life makeover mentality that I wanna have is like, it's not about being fast. It's not about being the best. It's not about being in competition with someone else. Like, look guys, I'm 28 and so many people I know have like purchased houses and purchased condos. And I like, I couldn't afford to do that right now. It's not fair to myself to compare to them and to be mad at myself that I didn't do that. All I can do is be on my own journey. And that's that. Whew, that's my rant. I was planning to just do some B-roll, but that's my rant.
to admit, I'm already feeling so much better. I just find this exercise is so, I just find this exercise is so soothing and so therapeutic. So highly recommend trying it. After I did some of that personal finance journaling, you guys saw I wrote down my fall financial goals. They are pretty simple. I didn't want to overwhelm myself or set anything that is too unrealistic. I just kind of want to go back to basics. Once the basics are covered, I'll be able to maybe set some more audacious goals that are in line with those annual goals. So one of those goals is to earn $6,000 a month between my business and my personal. I have finally, and this was such a big goal of mine for 2024, I have finally separated my business finances from my personal finances. It was just like so time that I do this. I have many different sources of income, copywriting, teaching bar, and then YouTube and just kind of like social media adjacent sources. So even within that one bucket, there's like many other sources. So I've basically separated everything YouTube and social media into its own business. And then my bar teaching and my copywriting, those are like my personal sources of income. So this is something I've been meaning to do for so long and just, Obviously social media and like making YouTube videos is such a passion of mine, but also having that like business mind and the business finances side behind it. So between all of those sources, my goal is to earn $6,000 a month or more. Big manifesting dreams would be like $10,000, but we'll see what we could do. The next goal is just to finalize and really finish up separating the business from the personal. Anything that was automatically being deposited into my personal bank account, I wanna redirect it over to the business. I just did all the transfers and took money from my emergency fund and from Maggie's sinking fund. So it is gonna be a big goal of mine to repay that. I don't like that I had to take money from there. So I just wanna pay that back as quickly as possible. To me, having, especially with my emergency fund, like taking from my emergency fund almost feels like taking on debt. That's kind of how important it is for me. And I just wanna keep that number at 10,000, now it's down to 9,000. So I really wanna pay that back quickly. Then again, maybe contributing to my investments is actually more important than having it be at 10,000 because $9,000 is still so much money. So I don't know, that actually might be something for me to think about is like, what do I wanna prioritize? Because I've put my investments on hold like all summer, like I've put contributing to my investments on hold all summer and I really just wanna get the ball back up and rolling get as close as I can to that audacious goal that I set of $20,000. Oh, I just thought of another goal I have to write down, which is to check in with my net worth. As I figure out having separate business and personal spending, I'm torn between how much do I wanna pay myself per month. One of the big reasons for separating the business from the personal is having a more consistent and more steady income every single month because when it fluctuates so much, it is very, very stressful. It's so easy to get excited when you have a great month and spend more. And then, you know, when you have a worse month, you're like, oh my gosh, you're like scraping your money together. You're taking from your emergency fund. So I really want to get consistent and have more of like a set. I'll never have an exact set monthly income because I'm not a salaried employee, but from my business to myself, I want to give myself like a salary. I need to figure out what that number should be. I'm thinking around $1,000 a month to start and just really living off of my bar and my copywriting income. However, I do have a kind of a weird goal and it's definitely unrealistic, which is to pay myself nothing from the business because I just wanna start building up money there and be able to buy a new computer and be able to buy some like new supplies. But then again, like I can't just keep taking from my emergency fund and like hoarding money in the business account. So TBD there. And then like I just said, the last goal is the net worth check-in. So I'm sure this list will grow over the fall, but it was really fun just to spend a little bit of time setting those goals. To me, there's nothing more life makeover -y feeling than journaling. Like journaling to me feels so life makeover. It's always felt that way. Like even since I was a teenager and that's when I kind of coined that life makeover phrase for myself, it's journaling, cleaning and starting a new project. And we will talk about starting a new project tomorrow because I'm cooking up something so exciting.
<laughs> aside from rereading my favorite children's books. The last thing I did in terms of goal setting you guys saw was I filled out my press reset habit tracker. I love this spreadsheet and I've shown it many times in my videos before. I kind of took a break from using it over the summer, but I'm so excited now that it's back to productivity season to be back on my habit tracker and my goals tracker game. I basically rewrite the things that I write down in my monthly reset in my gentle productivity planner in the goal and habit tracker so that I have a paper version and a digital version. I like doing things twice. It's extra work, but it makes me feel good. So that is my little goal setting routine now that we are back to productivity. I am so hungry, you guys. It's like 5.30 and it's dinner time. So I am going to say goodbye, good night, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Hi guys, <laughs> you probably can tell where we are. We're in a parking garage. It's Friday afternoon, Rockland. <laughs> I feel like all of my vlogs end up here. I wanted to do a little card chat with you guys about something that I've been just like kind of teasing in my monthly reset and then up until now, which is a new project that I'm going to be taking on. Plus give you guys like some work updates on the fitness instructor, bar instructor front. I feel like this could have its whole own Sunday chat about my experience as a fitness instructor and just kind of like diving into this world it's been almost a year so let me know it'll be a year in november so you guys let me know if you would like a sunday chat on this topic if i should do like a full like 30 minute sit down and tell you guys about how i got here and like my experience and how it's been because i've really overcome so much when I first started teaching, I would have such bad anxiety. I used to teach only Friday nights at six and the whole 12 hours before, so like starting, not 12 hours, 24 hours, starting Thursday night at six, I would have so much anxiety about coming to give my class and now it's something that I really look forward to. I used to feel so worried about what people would think of me and whether or not they would like my class and how did I measure up compared to the other girls and you know what do they think when they when when clients look at me do they think I'm fit enough do they think I'm strong enough do they think I'm this enough like I had so much self-doubt and that has like almost all gone out the window. I just feel so much more confident because I think that confidence comes with experience and I don't worry as much if people like my class anymore. Like I still do a little bit because I take pride in what I'm doing and I wanna give people a good experience. But at the end of the day, it's like if they don't like me, if they don't like my class, then like they just don't have to come back. Like not everyone is for everyone. I don't love every single fitness instructor I've ever come across. And so not everyone's gonna love me and that's fine. My journey started out teaching one class a week, then two, then added a third, then added a fourth that was great like i felt really good teaching four there was part of me that wanted more and part of me that like just wanted to keep it as is the update and the thing that kind of sparked this whole new project that i'm going to be taking on is one of my classes was cut so i would teach tuesdays at 4 p.m friday friday and then saturday and my saturday class got cut and i remember when the class got cut, I was like crushed because honestly that class wasn't performing very well. It was Saturdays at noon, which is not a great time slot because let's be honest, people like to be on with their Saturday things by then. All of the earlier classes would fill up and then my class would be like two people. <laughs> But I was still sad because I loved going in there and I loved teaching and this is also a part of my monthly income. And so when that got taken away from me and it got taken away like very short notice, I was really upset and I was like, okay, it's kind of hard having your schedule and your income completely in someone else's hands. Then kind of as like a consolation, they offered me a third class on Friday. And at first I wasn't sure cause I was like, oh my gosh, two classes is already so much because I do about 75% of the class with the class. Like I'm showing the movements, I'm kind of doing it along with people. I do get up and walk around and like give corrections and modifications, but 
50 to 75 percent of the class like i'm there doing it with them so i already do two classes on friday i was like do i feel okay to add a third i decided yes which is pretty cool so i now will be teaching the lunch class here at rockland on fridays because i'm already making the drive and so it's a long drive here sometimes it can be up to 45 minutes here 40 minutes home i was like you know what let's just make the most of the fact that I'm already commuting, let's add another class in because I want the money and I need the money. <laughs> like this is a part of my job and I'm trying to get paid. However, I'm going to have a pretty big gap. When my class ends at one, my next class isn't until 4.45. And so I was thinking, what am I gonna do with that time? Of course I can sit there and work, but it kind of sparked something in me of, I have been wanting for a while, I've been going back and forth about whether or not I should learn how to teach pilates and learn more about pilates because pilates and bar are very similar i love pilates i feel like currently for my own personal workouts i actually prefer pilates right now they're very similar it's just pilates is a bit more of like a slower pace and i just oh i just love it it feels so good in your body like matte pilates reformer is too expensive <laughs> so i've been going back and forth about getting certified to expand what I'm able to teach and to be able to teach Pilates because even when it comes to my personal style of teaching I like to teach a bit slower like I like to teach the way I want to work out and I feel like that's kind of my like that's like my strategy with everything I do same with YouTube is like I want to make the YouTube videos that I want to watch so I want to teach the class and I want to build the class that I want to take. At the gym that I work at, I was trained in their signature style of class, their signature style of bar. And I also think I have this weird opposition like thing where sometimes if someone tells me to do something, I'm like, no. Like if you tell me I have to do something a certain way, if you tell me that I have to like sit a certain way when I drive or dress a certain way or speak a certain way, like anything someone tells me to do, like Zoe, you have to do it like this, something inside of me like gets mad and I have to do it differently. Like it's just this weird thing about me. And so I think because at my gym, they really tell us to make our classes fast and be on the beat and blah, 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 blah. It's like, yes, it's fun. And I loved being a client at this gym too. Like I was working here, I was taking classes here, but I don't love teaching that way. I don't know if it's because I just feel this like annoying need to be different and to like not have to obey what someone's telling me or if it's just my personal style. But that has also led me to wanting to learn a different way of teaching and a different way of building a class that isn't so fast paced and music focused. Because also when it comes to music, like I'm not a super EDM girl. I love like slow music. You guys know I love Drake. I love like a little bit more chill. I also love working out to like rap and hip hop, like especially, especially like 2015, 2016 to like 2019 hip hop. Like that is my prime, probably because those were my going out days. And so now that's what I want to work out to. So by no means am I like leaving this gym, nothing, nothing, nothing like that. I just want something else and I want something different. So when they offered me this lunch class and I knew I was going to have this gap, I thought this is the perfect time to dedicate to getting certified in teaching Pilates. So that is what I'm going to be doing. And that is so exciting. And yeah, I just, I'm excited to kind of take you guys along that studying journey because I did not share anything when I was training for bar because I felt so sure that I was gonna drop out or fail at some point. Like I was so insecure about the whole thing that I didn't tell you guys until it was done. Now I know what I'm capable of, I know I can do it. And so I wanna share this journey with you guys. So I hope you guys are excited about that. The other thing that it means is that I will be able to film Pilates videos and put them up on YouTube. I will probably make a separate channel and I don't know how many I'm gonna be able to do or, or, or what that will look like, but even if it's just once a month, I'd love to post a free workout video that we can do together. I think that would be so cool. The reason I can't do that now, I forget if I mentioned it already, but I have a non-compete with this gym. So I'm not allowed to teach bar anywhere else. And I think that includes online, but I am allowed to teach Pilates. So once I'm certified, that will be something exciting that we will actually be able to do together, like to work out together via the internet. The same way that we hang out in the vlogs, we'll be able to work out together in those videos. So we are gonna go into the mall. My class, I'm like such a mess today. 
it's already 3 30 so my plan was actually to purchase like to choose a thing a thing <laughs> to choose a program in which i want to do the studies and get started today i don't have time because i need to build my classes that start literally in an hour um so that'll be for another vlog i was thinking though i guess we don't need to start today i was thinking that we would go buy a notebook but I think we'll just wait until I like choose the program, but I'm gonna do something online, self-paced and self-directed, and I'm really, really excited. So that feels very life makeover-y because studying in the fall, like going back to some kind of studying, it's so exciting and to have a new project and a potential new source of income, a potential new job, like new places to teach, um, it's, it's all really exciting and yeah, those were my rambles. <laughs> thank you guys for listening i actually think i may as well just end off this vlog here because i was like oh let's go in and buy a notebook but i'm gonna wait until next week so i will show you guys that next week next week will be my first day yes let's do next friday i will do like a day in my life as a fitness instructor and we'll study together i'll take you guys along for class i think we should do that so keep an eye out for that Thank you guys for watching. I love you so much. Thank you, Fabric, for sponsoring this video. We love a good 10-minute card chat to wrap up a vlog, don't we? Don't we? Okay, I'll see you guys next time.